Welcome to Worship Tutorials. In this video, we're gonna learn how to play the song The Blessing on electric guitar. We're gonna do this in the album key, which is the key of B. I have a capo on the second fret of my guitar because I don't like to play in the key of B, and we're gonna use a lot of open chords for this. Uh, it's a pretty simple arrangement, pretty simple parts, but basically we're gonna use key of A chord shapes uh, when we're down here. When we're up here, we'll talk about what we're doing. It'll be, you know, key of B stuff. but. Uh, before we get started on this one, there are numerous arrangements of this song out there. Some very long, some not so long. Uh, there are multiple, like if you go to rehearsal mix and look at the parts, there's like four guitars that you don't really hear any of them at any given point. It's like a lot of ambient stuff and rhythm type stuff. So I'm going to try and boil this down into like one part. So if you're a single guitar player, playing in a band, this is how I, well, we did this song last week, and this is how I played it on electric guitar. Um, if there are multiple guitar players, uh, one of you can just play ambient the whole time, and the other can play like these parts I'm gonna show you. Uh, so, gear-wise in this video, what you might need to pull this off, uh, I'm playing a Tokai uh, Les Paul Reborn. Now, you don't have to play a Les Paul uh, when you play in general or on this song, but you should. So that's what I'm playing in this video. All right, we're running that through the Axe FX3 today. Uh, but if you don't have a modeler, we have patches for all of these for Helix, Fractal stuff. If you don't have that, if you're using like a traditional amp and pedals or a pedal board and a stomp or something like that, uh, you're gonna need to be get ambient for this song. So big delays and reverbs uh, if you've got them. And then just a couple levels of gain. So you'll need like a, I, I would go three. I'd go like a low gain, a mid gain, and a big gain. So if you can pull that off, basically that's all you need. We're at 70 BPM. So I'm gonna organize this, this tutorial into sections. We're gonna talk about each individual section. I'm gonna teach it, then I'm gonna demonstrate it, and then I'm gonna talk tone, what you need to get the sound for that section. So the first like half of it, uh, we're talking intro, verse one, chorus one, maybe verse two and chorus two, depending on the arrangement. It's all just ambient swells. You don't have to play it all. Um, or you can play just really ambient stuff. So we have a swell setting. Uh, if you, Your most ambient setting on your setup is what you'll want. And really you're just going through the chords. So it's gonna be relative to the capo, A. We're just playing through that progression. You can play these cowboy open chords. I call them cowboy chords. A to D. Bass face shine upon E. Then there's an F sharp minor, which I like to play like this. I wrap my thumb around, grab that F sharp, and with an A suspended two on top of it. The Lord turn his face toward you, A, and give you E peace, and give you an E. The Lord will give you an E when the time is right, but it's actually an F sharp because we're capo. All right, so the other way you can do this that I like to do often is for my one chord, or the B in this situation, I like to play this chord voicing. Uh, we've talked a lot about this D shape that you can move up the neck. So in the key of B, if you bar across the 11th fret on the G, B, and E strings, and put your middle finger down on the B string, 12th fret, it forms this D chord, but that is a B. That right there, that note, is uh, just like the open B, you're on the 12th fret, it's a B. And if you play this voicing, I like that voicing. The Lord bless you. So now we're barring on the 9th fret and we got our pinky on the 12th fret and our middle finger on the 11th fret on the uh, G and the B string. So that's your B chord. The Lord bless you. Pull your middle finger off. So now you've got nine, nine, 12 and keep you, that's your uh, next chord, and then back to the B, may his face shine upon you, and then your five chord is uh, nine, 11, 11. All right, so those are the shapes that I like to play, especially with swells, they're kind of nice. So I'll demonstrate that. I'll do some swells down here and up here to show you how they sound different. Here we go, so this is like the intro of the song.
Nick, if I lulled you to sleep with my ambience over here. He's out like a light. It's a good thing these cameras are on tripods. It's all good. <laughs> okay, so uh, that's, like I said, that's going to get you through like, I mean, you could do the first whole half of the song. You could just play that until you hit the bridge or the instrumental before the bridge if you wanted to. Um, I like to do a couple things like after the first chorus, uh, I like to come into a tremolo sound. And then all we're really going to do is pick, like arpeggiate through the open chords uh, for this part. So it's a really ambient kind of part. You can use like an ambient clean or a tremolo sound. We'll get to the tone in a bit, but here's all I would do. So your, your A is the Lord bless you to D and keep you back to A. May his face shine upon you, E. Be gracious to you, F sharp minor. Lord turn his D face toward you, A, E, A. Okay? Um, and that's kind of the same thing for the chorus that comes after it, except the, it's just a slightly different chord progression. Amen is F sharp minor. Amen, D. Amen, A. Amen, E. So really, it just couldn't be easier. Um, on if you listen to like what is in the recorded like versions of the song, it's you hear some. You'll hear one player kind of doing, Lord bless you. It's these same shapes that we did in the swells and keep you. May His face shine upon you. Be gracious to you. Here's the minor. The Lord turn His face toward you and give you peace. So you hear one player do this, one player do just ambience, and another player do that kind of thing, right? Um, so I like to just play this because it feels like there's a little bit more there if I'm the only person playing. All right, so there's a couple sounds that I like to use. One is just a clean tone with tremolo. Um, and I actually kind of like to go to the bridge pickup. It just gives it a little bit more of a I don't know, a little more aggressive kind of a sound. Even though this is not a, a, where you want to be aggressive, it just kind of like pokes through the mix a little bit. You can go middle, bridge, it doesn't really matter, just kind of whatever fits what you're going for. I'll stay in the middle position. So here's like that tremolo sound. So all that really is, is just clean tone, not huge reverb, although you could if you wanted to, um, with tremolo and a quarter note delay. If you're using uh, a, an effect like tremolo, um, you have to realize that if you put a bunch of reverb and delay after it, it's gonna wash out what the tremolo is doing. So you're not gonna hear as much of the trim. So I like to keep my tremolo sounds a little drier uh, so you can actually hear the tremolo. The other thing you could do is put the trim after your wet effects. We've done that before for uh, presets. And that sounds really cool too. Then you can have all that reverb and delay, but your tremolo is won't, won't, you know, doing that to it. The other sound you could use in here, and I actually like to use the trim sound during the verse, and then just this ambient clean sound during the chorus. Uh, and then go to the, I like to go to the bridge on the chorus. Um, and this is really just a big reverb and a dotted eighth note delay. This might actually be a, a dual delay. Let's listen. Yes, it is. Dun, 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 dun. So it's like a eighth note or a quarter note into a dotted eighth, and then they're kind of uh, meshing together. But it's the same kind of thing, just with a little bit different tone. All right, so the next thing we're gonna run into is the instrumental section in front of the bridge and the first pretty much half of the bridge. It's all kind of the same. Now again, you'll hear multiple guitars playing different things if you listen to like the re rehearsal mix, uh, ver uh, you know, the parts individually. But there is a distinct part that happens here that I like to play as the only guitar player. And it's very simple. It's based around this A, two or a suspended second chord uh, right here. So, and it just kind of arpeggiates between it. So you're on the E, A, D, G and the D string. And it goes like this. 
So that's just your A. You're just picking between those two notes. Now lift off the D string so it's open. Okay, that's the first two parts. And then you come up and you're playing on the fourth, relative to the capo, fourth fret and second fret. And then you come down on the first, like you're like kind of like an E chord. That's the E. It's like just the, the middle part of that E chord. Okay? So it really just happens on two notes. So relative to your capo, you go two, 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 two. Two open. Four, two. Two, two. One, two. Okay? And that happens through the instrumental through like all lot of that may his favor be upon you that whole section it goes like may his favor be upon you and a thousand generations and your family and your children and their children and their children may his presence okay it's like all throughout that now if you listen to rehearsal mix um, the the guitar player that plays that part, he plays it all the way through, like all the bridges and everything until you get to the next, the big chorus that comes after. I like to sort of uh, move that part. Once the bridge really picks up, I like to move it into a different position. So you're playing here. And it's really easy because you end with like the middle part of that E chord. I like to move it up. So now I'm gonna forget the capos here. We're just gonna go what fret we're actually on. So the next part that I like to play is up here. It's kind of around the, the uh, eighth and ninth fret. Okay, so you're on the D string on the eighth, or sorry, the, the ninth, and then you're on the G string on the eighth. Okay, and then you go nine, nine. It's almost exactly the same kind of thing. Then you go 11, nine. Then 11, 11. I like to play it this way. All right, so I'm gonna slow it down. So I'm gonna go, the uh, G string is, is eight to the D string nine. Then you go both ninth fret. Then G string on the 11th fret. I like to use my pinky for this then both 11. And watch out that you don't push things out of tune, like I often do. Um, okay, so you, you can kind of pick it, and I like to pick up the pace because this is where the song is building, right? Whoops! Okay, then uh, on the last part, what I would call this like the tags of the bridge. He is for you, he is for you, right? When in doubt in this song, just sing he is for you because that's kind of like half the lyric. All right, so um, Nick is laughing in the background. It's, it's not untrue. It's not untrue, they say, man, he is for you. Okay, so uh, on that part, uh, you want to get more aggressive with it. So I just like to... It's the same fingerings. Okay, basically what I'm doing there is you can let the A string ring open because that's the one. Uh, it's capo two, so it's actually a B. It's the root. So you can... You want to mute the low E string because it's not going to ring in the right key. And I like to mute the G and the B, or the B and the E strings with like the flesh of one of my fingers over here, right? So you can kind of just, you can, uh, what, are the, what do the kids say? Go ham? I don't think it's kids anymore. I think it's old it's people like out of touch like me. Like you can go ham on it. I'm going to own that. It's my saying now. <laughs> Comes from the man in the jean jacket with the Les Paul, right? <laughs> Anyway, it lets you strum. Because at this point, everything is huge. You're... All right, let the people in the congregation know that this is intense, okay? Because the sound guy might have your guitar just buried 
in the mix. Let's be honest, it's probably happening to you. So your body language can communicate the tone that you wish people could hear, okay? So speaking of tone, let's go there. Uh, I like to start this with a light overdrive. I'm using like a king of tone type of a thing, light gain, uh, with some reverb. Of course we need reverb and like a dotted eighth. Check that, that's a dual delay. So a big reverb, dual delay, like stage one drive. Okay, I like to start this part in the middle position because you can basically get another gain stage of, of tone by flipping to your bridge, right? So you're in the middle, and then I'm gonna flip to the bridge to show you that's like a lift, right? So. Okay, so always uh, be aware of what pickup position you're using and your picking dynamics. I mean, you, you don't have to step on a pedal to get a different sound. You can use your fingers and the controls that are on the guitar. They're there for a reason. Okay, so you've basically got two kind of like levels of, of build there. Remember, this is like a long build. If you look at the waveform of the playthrough we did, it looks like this. Just long, long, probably off the frame by now, but it's how it looks. Okay, so um, when you go to this part that comes here, here, when you go there, we're big, okay? So we need more gain. So I'm gonna go to like my mid gain sound. Everything else like reverb and delay is the same, but it goes from like a light gain to a medium, like a tube screener kind of thing. So I'm gonna demonstrate that. I'm gonna end this low section, go to the high section with the big sound, and I'll show you what that sounds like and how it kind of fits together. Okay, so there, you hopefully I communicated with my strumming the kind of sound that I want, okay? If they can't hear you, they can see you, anyway. All right, so after that, we get to uh, like just the big, big choruses and big bridge section. So for that sound, um, there are, you know, multiple rhythm guitar players. There is like a lead part that follows the melody of the Amen part. Okay, so um, I like to play that. If I'm the only player, I like to play that because it gives you something else kind of to do to stand out, right? Rather than just more power chords with just massive amounts of reverb and delay. Uh, so to play that, we're gonna be on, we're gonna start on the high E string on the 11th fret. That's the ah part. Really, really what we're doing is we're just playing around like we already formed this B chord earlier. It's all inside of this, and there's a scale that's right around here that we're gonna use. So we're gonna go 11th on the A on the high E, to the 14th on the B, to the 12th on the high E, back to the 11th. So that's Amen, okay? And you really, you, you wanna just keep this shape All right, so did you kind of follow what happened there? We're in this shape again, 11 to 14 on the B, to 12 on the E, to 11 on the E, to 12 on the B, to 12 on the E, to 11 on the E, to 12 on the B, to 11 on the E, to 12 on the E, to 14 on the B. All right, follow that. If you did, if that was too fast, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna play it really slowly. I'm not gonna say what I'm playing, I'm just gonna play it for you so you can see exactly how it all fits together. 
and I'm just gonna kind of keep this shape here the whole time. Ready? Here we go. <laughs> we gotta keep that in the edit. No, yeah, right, here we go. Nope, that's not it. <laughs> nah, the one string off. All right, one fret off. Here we go. Ready? Again, slower. Okay, now for tone on this, you want all the drive that you have, all the reverb that you have. It's just this huge, sort of, I call it the ambient lead sound. I'm gonna turn it on, I'm gonna play it so you see how it kind of goes. Actually, I'm gonna come out of that bridge section and I'm gonna go into it so you see how it goes, sort of in time. Ready? <laughs> So after we do that sort of lead section over the chorus, there's another bridge section. And I like to play a rhythm part here, keeping the same sound and kind of the same position. So we've been down here most of the time. Now toward the end, we're gonna just kind of be up here for a little while. Um, and I just keep this, this D shape that forms the B chord. Uh, so the bridge, two, three, four, here's that. If you suspend it, which just means play the high E string on the 12th fret as well. Back to the B, the D shape. And then this is the five shape, remember? We talked about that earlier. It kind of gets you the one to the four. Back to the one. To the five. And then you're going to end it right there. At least on like the radio version, that's how it ends. Um, so you can play that. You can play other things. May it's fade before you, behind you, beside, whatever the words. I don't know the lyrics off the top of my head, but you can play through them here. That's going to get messy with this much drive, reverb, and delay. So you might want to go to a less driven, less wet affected sound. Um, you could play the parts like this. These are the parts we talked to, the chord shapes we talked about in the beginning. But basically you're just doing a rhythm part. Um, like I said, I like to kind of hang out here. Because it's like it lifts above everything else that's happening. Uh, if there's mo two of you playing in the band, two guitar players, one of you play here, one of you might play that, one of you might play that. Gotta play the right, you know, power chord. Uh, but you can kind of just split up where you are on the neck playing these power chords. You're just going for a big wall of sound at this point. That's what it is. Um, so I'm gonna demonstrate that. So I'm gonna come out of the the chorus, that ah man kind of lead part, and then go into that rhythm part. Um, so I'll play the lead thing once, and then we'll do that rhythm thing on top of it. Sounds like this. <laughs> And that's it. Now, you notice that I was pushing these strings out of tune a little bit. That's why it sounded 
a little dissonant in ways that didn't sound pleasant. Uh, so keep that in mind. Don't do like I did and play it out of tune. Uh, this is this guitar is easy to do that because these frets are so shallow on this thing. Uh, but it doesn't negate the fact that you should be playing a Les Paul. Okay, I'm just, I'm just saying. Uh, but work on playing that stuff in tune so that your intonation sounds right. Um, but that's the part. Now, if that's difficult for you, like it is for me, uh, I might actually choose to play a little bit different part that is easier for me to play in tune. Okay? So um, those are your options for the end. And that's pretty much the whole song. It's, it's just a few sounds, um, and it's not really that many parts. But I thought I wanted to make a tutorial on this because, it, for me at least, I feel like it can be difficult to know what to play on a song like this, especially when you hear the song. Like, if you don't have access to the individual parts, like from rehearsal mix, you just hear the recorded version of the song. It just sounds like there's not really distinct guitar parts in it. Maybe you heard, you know, that bridge part. But maybe not even, because really what's taking the forefront there is the piano. That guitar part just kind of complements the piano. So it can be difficult to know what to play on songs like this, especially if, if you see, oh, there's four guitars on there. What am I gonna play as the one guitar player? Hopefully this video has helped you uh, understand what to do, how to approach this, and feel free to kind of make it your own. I kind of did that with this, that moving line part that moves up. Um, you kind of have that going on with all the arrangement, but there's not one single guitar that does that. So uh, that's just kind of my own interpretation of it. Hey, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Much more content like this coming very soon, very often. See you in the next one. Bye.